Good morning, church family. Good morning. How are you today? A warm welcome in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to all who are here in God's house and our online worshipers. A special welcome to any visitors joining us. If you have no church home, we warmly welcome you to the community of faith here at Clare Lee. Unfortunately, we must cancel Mary Janet's service of recognition once again this morning due to our clerk of session recuperating from COVID. We do hope that for next week, Sunday, July 21st, 24th. For all other announcements, please refer to the monthly news flash. Thanks. Well, I noticed Audrey mentioned the word warm twice in that introduction, and I think we all feel it. But I do hope you feel the spirit of Christ, love, and his acceptance uh, in our worship time today. And Wayne, we're glad to welcome you, Karen's friend Wayne. He's come all the way down from Rice Lake to be with us this morning. That's a sacrifice. <laughs> so the Lord bless you as you, uh, as you help us worship musically today. And we have a couple of special treats today for our music as we come to the Lord. As we prepare our hearts to worship, let's stand if we're able and sing Holy, Holy, Holy. the good news. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is Lord. Lord. Glory to God. God. Let us worship the Lord as we sing Ferris Lord Jesus 375.
worship is a dialogue with the Lord as he invites us into his presence and as we respond in praise and in prayer. So let's lift up our hearts to the Lord in prayer. O oh God of wonder, God of power and might, your whole creation this day shimmers with beauty. You made surging oceans and running streams. You grew great forests and filled them with singing birds. You crowned human beings with honor and glory. You chose your people Israel to be a blessing to all the nations. And in the fullness of time, you sent Jesus to save the world you love. Great God, beauty so old, so new, so high, so near, we worship you. And as we enter into our time of worship this Sunday, Lord, we pray that you would quiet our hearts, that we could hear your voice speaking in Scripture. We pray that you will stir our hearts, that we might more faithfully follow Jesus, and that you will be glorified by the praise and the prayers we offer you. May our worship help us to offer our entire lives to you and unite us with your whole church throughout the world. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, who with the Father and the Spirit is one God, worshipped and blessed forever. Amen. Friends, the Apostle John wrote, My little children, I'm writing these things so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. And so in the strength of that assurance, let's confess our sins to God together. Let us pray. God of all mercy, give us grace to make a fresh start today. We have shut our eyes to your glory, our minds to your truth, and our hearts to your spirit. And yet we want to love you, Lord, to offer you true worship and joyful service. Pardon us from all our sins, and since your paths are always loving and sure, guide us in the way we should go, and lead us on every step of the journey of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Dear friends, hear such good news. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Know that in Jesus, the Lord himself embraces you and forgives you and strengthens you to live a new redeemed life. Thanks be to God. And in the strength and the knowledge of that forgiveness, we experience this peace Peace with the Lord and peace that we want to extend to one another. So sisters and brothers, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And, also with you. and would you please share that peace with your neighbor around you. And hello online church family. Peace of Christ be with you too. Well, friends, I mentioned that we have some special musical pieces today, and today um, we're going to hear Sophia, who will be playing with Karen in a piano duet, and we are invited to sing as the second hymn. We can remain seated while we sing. Oh, when the saints go marching in. So put on your marching shoes.
day that will be. What a day that will be. Jonah, come read God's word to us, my brother. Today we will be reading Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 16. So, one day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And a man lame from birth was being carried in. People would lay him daily at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate, so that he could ask for alms for those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Stand up and walk. And he took him by the right hand, raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Jumping up, he stood and began to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God, and they recognized him as the one who used to sit, asking for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and astonishment at what had happened to him. While he clung to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's portico, utterly astonished. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people. Fellow Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servants, Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witness, and by faith in this name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the, pre in the presence of all of you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. By faith in His name, let's sing now this modern praise chorus, Your Name. Let's stand together.
faces out there, and a lot of young at heart faces as well. The story we just heard from Acts 3 that Jonah read for us is a really powerful story about the power of Jesus and the name that is above every name. And um, I want to share, this is a wonderful children's story Bible. If you have children or if you have grandchildren, I want to commend this to you because it's filled with stories from Genesis to Revelation that puts in very simple and clear terms with illustrations and pictures um, the stories of the Bible. And I'm just going to read this same story Jonah read for us, the children's version. Okay, Jonah? So, oh, I guess I'd better find it first. That's always the important part. Is the <laughs> And it's called Peter Heals. At 3 o'clock one afternoon, Peter and John were walking to the temple together to pray. And ahead of them, they saw some people carrying a man who couldn't walk. They carried him to the beautiful gate of the temple, laid him down, and left him alone. But because he couldn't walk, there he is at the temple gate, the man couldn't work, so he begged for money to buy food. When Peter and John walked up to the gate, the man asked, Would you please give me some money for some food? And Peter said to the man, Look at us. We don't have any money for you, but I have something much better. In Jesus' name, I say, get up and walk. And Peter reached out for the man's hand, and suddenly the man's feet and ankles and legs grew strong. And with a happy cry, the man jumped up and started walking. He danced and he skipped and he, he hopped as he made his way into the temple with Peter and John. The man laughed and shouted and praised God. Peter and John had to move out of the way of people from all over the temple, were amazed and came rushing toward the man. Everybody was talking all at once. One man asked, what happened to this man? And another wondered, isn't this the beggar who can't walk and sits by the temple gate asking for money? Somebody else questioned, how has he been healed? Finally, Peter stepped in and said in a loud voice to the surprised crowd, this man believes in Jesus and his faith has made him strong. Right in front of you, He's been given a healthy body because he believes. Here he is, smiling and leaping and praising the Lord. It's so good to listen and take in these stories. And I want to encourage you, whether you're younger or older, get a hold of a translation of the Bible maybe you're not used to reading. Or if you have kids or grandchildren, bless them by getting them a one of these Bible story books like this Spark Story Bible. It will, uh, it will spark their imagination and help them grow in their faith, as I'm sure it will for you and me too. So Lord, bless the children of our church, and especially, O oh God, this, these weeks we remember the children Monday to Friday who are here with urban promise at their Camp Hope. Make it a special summer when your hope will be kindled in many hearts and lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, I'd like to ask Sharon Singh to come forward. And Sharon is going to be singing a special number, God on the Mountain, by Bill and Gloria Gaither. And you are invited, congregation, to join in at the chorus, which is printed in our bulletins. And the God on the mountain is still God in the valley. When things go wrong, he'll make them right. And the God of the good times is still God in the bad times. The God of the day is still God in the night.
Thank you, Sharon and Wayne and Karen. What a, what a wonderful reminder that is, and what a truth that is. What a truth that is. Well, you know, one act of kindness can transform a person's day, even change their life. The actor Morgan Freeman once said, how do you change the world? One random act of kindness at a time. And, and here in our story, just after they had been filled by the Holy Spirit, we see an act of kindness performed by Peter and John that led to a remarkable chain of events and growth in the church. It was the part of the beginning of an explosion that eventually changed the whole world. People were attracted by the sheer undiluted power of God released through this act of kindness. We're working our way through the book of Acts, and at the end of chapter 2, the passage we looked at last Sunday, we see a rather cozy picture of the church gathered for, for teaching and fellowship and breaking of bread and prayer, where those who believed were united in heart and mind. They held all things in common. It's an idealized picture of the Christian community a place of mutual support and caring. But you know, with such a warm, cozy atmosphere, how, how tempting it would have been for those first believers to forget about the cold, cruel world outside the boundaries of their loving fellowship. But of course, the saving work of God isn't restricted to people gathered in a church building there's an old hymn that I used to sing as a boy, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that draws me from a world of care. And of course that's true in the sense that we gather here for an hour every Sunday to be renewed and strengthened to face the, the challenges and difficulties of the world outside for another week. But friends, I think Luke is telling us that, in the church, that the church is gathering to break bread and teach and pray joyfully was in no way a detour around or away from the misery out of the world. Because no sooner had Peter and John gone up to the temple to pray than they were confronted by a man who was lame from birth. The path to worship and prayer and Christian community goes straight through human misery. Not avoiding it, not ignoring it, but facing it head on in the powerful name of Jesus, the risen Savior. So let's look at this story and what happened to these, to these two guys on their way to the afternoon prayer meeting. Traditionally, the Jewish day would begin at 6 in the morning and ended at 6 o'clock at night. And for a devout Jewish person, there were three special times of prayer. 9 in the morning, 12 noon, and 3 in the afternoon. And here we read that Peter and John were going up to the 3 p.m. prayer meeting to join in the prayers at the temple in Jerusalem. Of course, the Jewish people believe that the Lord heard their prayers whenever and wherever they prayed them. But they felt there was a special, there was, their prayers were especially precious to God, and they were more powerful and effective when they prayed together with others in the temple court. And the same is true for us, friends. We can, we can pray whenever and wherever we like to the Lord. But there does seem to be special power and joy when we meet together with even a few other believers in a particular place like a church building or online together at a regular time like we do at Clarely Park every Thursday at 7 p.m. Anyway... It was the hour of prayer, and Peter and John went to pray. 
And just as they arrived on the temple grounds at the gate that was called Beautiful, they saw a man on the ground who was physically disabled begging from the people who passed by. Apparently, he was carried to the Beautiful Gate every morning, and he'd been doing this for a very long time. Now, I'm sure this was a fairly strategic location from which to beg, since people on their way to worship God are often in a more generous frame of mind toward their fellow men and women. But isn't it ironic, the name of that gate? Isn't it ironic that the gate was called beautiful? Because what John and Peter saw wasn't something beautiful. They saw a disabled human being reduced to begging in order to survive to put food on the table, a sign of human suffering, a sign of, of the world's disorder. On that busy temple mount, his, his repetitive prayer, alms for the poor, alms for the poor, or whatever it was he must have said, his repetitive quest for money to survive another day must have sounded like a like a dripping water faucet droning on and on in the background as people came and went, alms for the poor. It's like the people I see sometimes begging in front of the TTC station at Young and Eglinton near where I live. The beggars sitting there are usually ignored. Most people passing by avert their eyes and they look somewhere else. When Peter and John got there, they saw a person in desperate need, begging for help. But instead of averting their eyes, instead of looking in some other direction, they stopped, the text says, and what did they do? They looked straight at him. And when their eyes met, something beautiful happened. One commentator says, what could have been simply an occasion for mechanical charity turned into a personal encounter. And as a result, the beggar's hopes were raised. Ooh. Looking up, he figured they were about to give him a generous financial gift. I mean, they stopped. They were looking at him. They were attending to him as a human being but they gave him something far more wonderful and valuable than any passerby had ever given him. Peter says, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. What they had and what they shared was the wholeness and the salvation that comes through faith in Jesus Christ. When they saw this disabled beggar, Peter and John didn't look the other way. Instead, their faith rose up and they did something. They saw someone in need and they recognized the inner beauty and dignity of a fellow human being. A fellow human being who was also made in God's image like them. And then they healed him through the power of Jesus' name. There is power in the name of Jesus. It's, it's not a magical formula. It's not just some phrase we tag on at the end of our prayers. You know, to the Jewish mind, a person's name revealed their character, who they were on the inside. And in Hebrew, the name Yeshua, the name Jesus, means God delivers or God saves. Now, there was a difference between the ministry of Jesus and the ministry of his disciples. Jesus healed on his own authority while his disciples did all that they did in his name. And in just the same way, friends, we are dependent on Jesus. In our weakness, you and I continue to exercise Christ's ministry in his power and in his name. That's one of the reasons I love singing that modern song, Your Name. 
The name of Jesus is is a strong and is a is a strong and mighty tower. It's a shelter like no other. Nothing has the power to save like his name, the name of Jesus. And not only was this man healed, jumping to his feet and walking and praising God, but other people were converted in the process. This one act of kindness by the apostles had an astonishing effect. The people, the text says, were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Would you be? And they came running to Peter and John. And how did the apostles respond? When a crowd gathered, what did they do? Well, Peter preached another message. <laughs> Just like he did back in Acts chapter 2. This demonstration of the power of God was accompanied by the proclamation of God's word, God's message, the gospel. Peter shared the good news of Jesus with the crowd, his death, his resurrection, and the need for faith. Peter's second sermon, just like the first one, was focused on Jesus, and it provides a model for all Christian preaching. I have a friend here, Andrew, who's there, and Andrew was just in a class with me up at Tyndale on preaching. So, Andrew, take notes here, brother, okay? <laughs> Peter starts by saying, people of Israel, why does this surprise you? What do you stare at us? Why do you stare at us if by our own power or godliness we made this man to walk? Peter doesn't want people focused on himself, but rather on Jesus. And his whole talk is about Jesus. Jesus in verse 13, he says, is God's servant. In verse 14, he is the holy and righteous one. In verse 15, he is the author of life. In verse 22, further on in our passage, he is the prophet foretold by Moses. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can all see, verse 16. So Peter gives the good news about Jesus. He speaks about sin, the cross, the resurrection, and the need to repent, for the people to repent and to turn to God. He assures them of God's promise to forgive their sins and restore their relationship with God. Later on in the chapter, verse 19, the sermon comes to this conclusion. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away and that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. That phrase, times of refreshing, comes when you spend time in God's presence. Prayer, reflection, and solitude and service when you're feeling weary or worn out or as Sharon was singing a moment ago when it's kind of nighttime in our souls you can be refreshed by spending time with God sometimes we need to learn to separate ourselves from the from the busyness of life and spend time with God the way Jesus did the Holy Spirit in his kindness wants to bring times of refreshing to you and to me. So friends, in this story from Acts 3, we see a wonderful example of the gospel in word and deed, in, in action as well as speech, of the power of God through Jesus' name to save and to heal. This is, this is an example for us to live out in our own time and in our own congregation today. Let me close by telling you a true story. Jonathan Goforth was one of the greatest of all Canadian Presbyterian missionaries. Have you heard that name before? He came out of Knox Church in Toronto, the church I formerly served down at Harvard and Spadina. 
Jonathan and his wife Rosalind served as missionaries to China for 47 years. If you go to Knox Church today, you can still visit the Go Forth Room, named in their honor, where worship and prayer meetings are still held. And there's a plaque at the church that was given by Chinese Christians at the end of Go Forth's ministry, presented to Go Forth, and the plaque is in the, uh, the wall at Knox Church in his honor, which names Go Forth's favorite Bible verse. You know what it was? I bet you can't quote this one. Zechariah 4.6. Well, I couldn't either. But not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. There's, there's the strength to live. Not human strength, not human power, but the spirit alive working in and through us. Go Forth was a deeply traditional, committed Presbyterian. He's died in the wool as they come. But he became famous for his preaching and his leadership during spiritual revivals that swept across Manchuria and other parts of China between 1900 and 1925. Through his preaching, Jonathan Go Forth and others that he trained Tens of thousands of Chinese people came to faith in Jesus. And in her book on the history of Christian missions, Ruth Tucker writes this about Jonathan Goforth. As he traveled throughout China throughout those years, Goforth's evangelistic ministry mushroomed. But some of his colleagues and supporters back home were wary of his evangelistic zeal. They were uncomfortable hearing reports of people weeping and confessing their sins of an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And some charged this had become a, a movement of fanaticism and Pentecostalism. But go forth, the diehard Presbyterian, a stubborn Scot, ignored the criticism and kept right on preaching. Go forth believed that times of spiritual renewal and growth and revival for all their messiness and untidiness was infinitely preferable to spiritual decline and death. So what does that mean for us today? Can the events of Acts 3 still happen? Or stories like this from the book of Acts something for ancient history but not for us? Well, I have a lot more to say on that, and I'm sure I will in the weeks to come, because there's more than one healing in the book of Acts. But friends, let me just say this for today. It's always dangerous to box God in and assume what God will or what God will not do. That God will always bring healing if we pray in Jesus' name? Well, patently, that's untrue. Remember, the Apostle Paul himself asked the Lord three times to take away the thorn in his flesh, whatever that unknown issue or ailment was. But the Lord said, no. My grace is sufficient for you, Paul. But it's just as dangerous to assume that God will not heal in our day. I've known people who have experienced healing in their bodies, in their minds, in their relationships. And we are encouraged in Scripture by the Lord to pray for people's healing in the name of Jesus and then let God do God's work in God's own wisdom and time. We're just called to be faithful. The power that exploded at Pentecost, the power that's found in the name of Jesus, is still for needy people like you and me. You know, all of us, one way or the other, are like that disabled man. There are areas of all of our lives that only the kind touch of God can heal. The gospel of Jesus is still powerful because nothing has the power to save and to heal like Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray. 
Lord, thank you that there is such power in the name of Jesus because behind the name stands the person of Jesus, the very Son of God. We pray for an opportunity this week to show kindness to someone like Peter or like John and to help them and to love them and to pray for them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Friends, we respond to God with our offerings. Would you join with me as we stand to sing praise God from whom all blessings flow. this little prayer guide for the Urban Promise children who are here during the day camp for the next uh, five weeks. They've just finished their first week and some of us were here on Tuesday at our, our Wednesday? What day was that? Whatever. Tuesday. Tuesday. That was Tuesday, right. Uh, and we had, we had our, our lunch out there in the shade under the trees and right at noon out came a whole bunch of kids and the staff members and it was just a delight and a joy to see this church being used for good purposes every day in the summertime with these young people. Let's lift up our hearts to the Lord. Almighty God, you taught us to pray not only for ourselves, but for people everywhere. So hear us as we pray for others in the name of Jesus Christ. O oh God, inspire your whole church with your power and unity and peace. Grant that all who trust you may obey your word and live together in love and seek your face. And we do pray, O oh God, for our own congregation of Claire Lee Park. Thank you, Lord, for the elders and the board of managers and for everyone who is a, a member a, or a participant in our worship. Would you bless them, Lord? And knowing that we are blessed in order to be a blessing to others. So use us, Lord, as members of your body to share your love through this congregation. Oh God, lead the nations in ways of justice and peace. Direct those who govern, we pray, our Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, our Premier, our Mayor, others in authority, Lord, that they may rule fairly and maintain order and uphold those in need and defend oppressed people. Lord, we continue to cry out to you for the trauma of what's happening in the Ukraine. Silence the warfare, Lord, the weapons of war soon, we pray. 
We remember the people of Sri Lanka undergo undergoing such civic turmoil with the economic challenges they're facing. And other places and peoples, Lord, around the world where there is strife or conflict. May your spirit come, Lord, in healing power. Lord, awaken in all of us the dangers that we have inflicted upon our earth. Implant in each of us a reverence for your creation that we might be enabled, Lord, through wise decision and planning and through your help to preserve the delicate balance of creation for coming generations rather than to ruin it. Give grace, O oh God, we pray, to these ones who are directing Camp Hope this week for Enrico and Lexi and Matthias and Mia. We pray, Lord, for the campers who are here during the week, that these children and youth, as they come to camp, would know that they are loved unconditionally. And we pray for their salvation, as well as their families, their education, and their safety while they're here at Clarely Park. And we pray, Lord, for the LITs, for the staff, for the street leaders who are involved in overseeing this camp. We pray for an environment of safety and creativity as they lead the campers. Encourage them, Lord, to grow and to, and to gain skills of leadership and to find grace when mistakes or conflicts arise. O oh Lord, comfort and help all those who are in trouble today, those who sorrow, those who are sick, those who are feeling grief. Especially, Lord, we pray to you for those in our congregation and hospital today, for Betty and for Stella, for those who continue to suffer with COVID, including Joyce and Jim and Jean and Tom and Beatrice and others, Lord, whom we name before you in silence. Heal them, Lord, in body, mind, or circumstance. Work in them by your grace wonders beyond all that they may dream possible. And Lord, hear us as we pray for ourselves, for our own questions, for our own struggles, for the challenges that we face this week. Lord, hear us now as we would pray together the prayer Jesus taught his followers to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Our hymn is number 644, May the Mind of Christ My Savior.
Yeah. 